I remember when my mother, uh, for first of all, she used to be against wearing pants in church back in the day. And um, we were like, we'll never get a pantsuit for Christmas. We just will not ever, because mom is so strict right now. <laughs> in one year, we all was opening up our gifts, and we pulled out, we got pants. <laughs> Mom's opening up now. So oh, we all right. had pants. I was responsible for that. Right. <laughs> oh, the older sister. And she oh, would I go shopping you. with Mom to get her right. stuff. Right. <laughs> that, you can thank yeah. me for that. Right. No problem. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Breaking the egg. Right. I think the most important part of the, of uh, the legacy that my mom has left is just what she instilled in us, being saved, not saying that you're saved, but actually living a saved life, not um, allowing the enemy to trick you and to understand that what, see, what people see, you know, is what they believe. Um, so if you say one thing and you live something else, then you are, you know, you're fooling God's people. And so I think most important in our lives, um, that was really, really critical for us because she was very, very strict on being able to live, save, and, and no matter where you went, that you ex exemplified that. Being saved and being a Christian, that's, you know, that, that was the epitome of who she was. There's a lot of music that is being intertwined, mm -hmm. which simply, like Twinkie was saying, you can mix it. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes you can grab a person that is into jazz, mm -hmm. and then you, you hear a little bit of gospel, and then you pull it together. It makes a total different song. Um, so I, I, I think that um, the music, um, it really, really doesn't matter how you intertwine, mm -hmm. just as long as the message is still the same. Right, I'm yeah. a poet and didn't know it. <laughs> you go, but girl. Is, but, and, and that is so true, though, because, um, you know, because what you're about, if you're about gospel music, you sing about gospel music, it, it's fine to do that, but make sure the message is still the same. Uh -huh. And I even, you know, because they call me the little jazzy one in the group. <laughs> so I do like a little jazz. Yeah. I do a lot of scatty. Funky and jazz. Yes. I like the funky and music. Jazz. Yeah, I, I really like that. And Twinkie actually was the one that that picked that up when she was given a song. Yeah. If you notice, for the Clark sisters, she gave me all the funky songs yeah, <laughs> and I the jazzy songs. Style. Yeah, mm -hmm. so she um, she gave a, uh, us the songs like that. Like Jackie's more smooth, mellow. mellow. Karen is the Michael Jackson of the group. <laughs> 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 so she, all of her songs were written to, to gear toward to each one of us and our personalities and our, <laughs> our um, giftings yeah. and um, the ministry. So I do admire that about Twinkie um, because she's a phenomenal songwriter. I mean, when you think of the songs, uh, You Brought the Sunshine, It's My Living in Vain, that's all Twinkie. Yeah, I got to give it to my girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A phenomenal songwriter, songwriter. But I think it's important, too, mm -hmm. to, to understand, too, that Dorinda writes as well. Yeah. She's written some awesome songs herself, oh, as yeah. well as Karen. Yeah. Um, and and just staying in tune to the ministry. Mm -hmm. And that music does, you know, music doesn't just have to be just gospel. It's like Dorinda saying, we intertwine it all, and mm -hmm. we come up with a message. If the message is something that's going to touch somebody's life, then you know you've done the best. Mm -hmm. You know that right. you've delivered what you um, started out to do. Mm -hmm. um, giving a message, encouraging somebody, inspiring somebody, educating somebody. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just building on on what you have. Or right. if you have nothing, and then you get a chance to hear some gospel music. Right. Um, and you're, you're flipping through the, the stations. You're, you're surfing. And as you're surfing, all of a sudden you hear a song. You, oh, let me go back to that. And you go back to it. And it says something that maybe you are dealing with in your life. Maybe you're down. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe, you know, you've been oppressed or depressed. And you hear something that's going to uplift you. Then you know what? Then the work that we, were spot we set out to do has been done. There are times when um, we could be actually singing. And um, because we're sisters, blood sisters, we can kind of feel when the spirit is really about to right. explode. Um, I, I, the, the Spirit of God is so powerful um, until, you know, you, you could see yokes being destroyed in the audience. You could see people weeping and crying. And a lot of times, um, you know, we will minister to a specific person 
and then it just, I mean, you could just see everybody else actually being blessed with that. Um, and, and the Spirit of God is just, is just so, I, I can't do nothing without it. I can't sing without it. I can't walk with it. I can't think without it. I always had this desire to be a good songwriter, so I would just shut myself away and pray and get into the Word. And then the Lord, Lord would bring these songs to me. And then from working with my mom on the road, she was the president of the music department of Church of God in Christ National. And I traveled with her and worked with her, and I got a lot of inspiration in working with her with, with different ministries. And then um, so, some of it was just from inspiration of other artists, so many that I don't need to name. And then listening to even, even some jazz and secular artists, I, I, I just had these, this, this desire to add that contemporary touch to gospel music where nobody else was doing it with the, the hard beat or the raggae style mixing and blending. But um, most of it come from just having a testimony. Once you've gone through the test and the Lord gives you um, the song. I think the reason why our ministry is so solid and it's so, you know, um, so meted together is because we as a kinship, because we're sisters, and that to me, um, it, it's a bond that cannot be destroyed or cannot be broken. It can only be destroyed or broken if we allow the enemy to intercede to do that. And one of the things that my mother prayed for was that we would always stick together in her dying bed. She said, stay together. Don't let anybody pull you apart. And I think the reason why we've had such wonderful, awesome success in the ministry is because of her prayer. And that prayer was that we would stay together and sing for the Lord, never taking it outside of, of where we are or doing something beyond that. Not that we can't do anything individually, but as a group, as sisters, you stay together and live for the Lord. That was it. That's ministry. Mm -hmm.